guys, how's it going? Today I want to talk about iron tone because I'm dealing with some yellow leaf issues out in my garden, which is kind of typical for us here in this area. Um, and we recently put up a video about biotone, kind of digging in a little bit deeper, talking about what was in that fertilizer, how it interacted with your plants. And I hope that video was helpful to you. And I think it was because I did see a lot of comments from you um, saying that you, know, you were glad to know the information and all of that. So I thought it might be helpful to do the same thing with this iron tone here just because it's something that I'm dealing with and maybe you guys are too. And there's a couple different ways that you can use it. Also gonna be talking a little bit about soil acidifier because it's something I have to use in my area. So let me show you what I got going on out here. In fact, it's just right over here. You might remember when I planted these pearl glam calicarpa or beauty berries right around my angel statue, you can see that they are clearly unhappy plants. The foliage is starting to turn yellow. Some of it's still a little bit green, but most of it looks like this. And this is classic chlorosis right here, or iron deficiency. And you can tell because the leaf tissue turns yellow, but the veining stays a dark color. And this isn't the only thing. Let's head to the west side and I'll show you a couple of bigger issues I've got going. So we've got a line of red point maples planted here and they all look pretty good, pretty much like this one here. Overall, nice deep green color. And it's not just because it's in the shade. Trust me, this one looks very nice. If you look just beyond it, the last maple in our row it has taken on a very yellow hue this year. And if you get close, in fact, let me pull a leaf off. You can tell it's an iron issue uh, because the tissue of the leaf is yellow. The veining has remained dark green. Thankfully, it's a really easy fix. Uh, but this isn't the only tree down here. I've got a crab apple, which they don't typically get an iron issue. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe these are planted in an area that just it's a pocket of maybe higher alkaline soil could be. Um, but look at this one is so severe that the leaves have started to burn because I didn't realize it until it was a little bit late. So these leaves won't rebound completely because you know you can't fix the burned leaves, but the other ones um, may show some signs of improvement this year. They will, they'll show some signs. It won't look amazing though until next year when it pushes new growth and all the burned ones are gone, but we need to start correcting the problem now. All right, so I'm sitting back in the shade where it's a little cooler. It's supposed to get over 100 degrees today here in Eastern Oregon. I did wanna mention that there may be a couple of reasons why the leaves on your plants are turning yellow. It may not necessarily be an iron issue. You'll be able to tell though by um, the examples I just showed you, the leaves that have yellow tissue with dark colored veining, definitely an iron deficiency problem. If the leaves on your plants are turning an overall yellow, including the veins and then dropping off the plant, it could be some kind of a shock issue, transplant shock. It could be that they're getting overwatered. If you're not sure what's going on, definitely take a picture of your plant, take a sample into your garden center, have them identify what's going on. That way you know the correct course of action instead of just you know applying just whatever to the soil. Um, and then I do wanna take a step back a little bit further too and talk about soil pH first because that's a huge factor on what your plants are actually able to take up. So typically in areas that have a lot of rainfall you'll find lower pH or more acidic soil because calcium or lime which makes a higher pH in your soil is very soluble and if you get a lot of rainfall it leaches a lot of that out making it more acidic and when you have more acidic soil it makes a lot of the other elements uh, more available to your plants but when you have a higher pH soil so you have a lot more calcium or lime because you don't have as much rainfall moving through your soil, that calcium, it binds up nutrients in your soil and makes it to where it's not available for your plants to take up. So it might, might be there, but it's otherwise bound up by the alkalinity. And that's why we have to work on our soil pH so much um, before we even add in the iron tone so that our plants can even take up the nutrients at all. So that's where the soil acidifier comes in for us. Now, we do have some areas in our valley that clock in at like 9.2 on the pH scale. I think my garden is in the high seven, so it's not super bad, um, but my Mother Nature will always try to win. It's not a once and done sort of situation. If you're trying to make certain plants grow in your area that just don't like a higher pH and you need to add this stuff in, it's something that you need to continually add in. And the nice thing about these is that they're organic, so they're a slow breakdown. Um, they work with the actual composition of your soil. When you use a water soluble type of iron, it's a quick shot of iron to your plant, but it's something that you have to continually add very frequently because it doesn't last in the soil. And because this stuff sticks around a lot longer, it's a lot longer of a fix. Um, but it's not something that you can necessarily stop. You can stop some really bad issues like with the crab apple. I imagine at some point after I do this for a certain number of years, I'll get to a point where I won't have to add it quite as often because I've worked on that soil so much. And the thing that's in both of these that helps bring down the pH is the sulfur. So that's the main ingredient in the soil acidifier. It's a really good portion of the iron tone, but this has some other things in it 
it too. So you can use it as kind of a plant food that has the sulfur to bring down the pH and then the iron to help boost your plant and feed it and give it the proper nutrients so that those leaves will turn a darker color. So I'm hoping that wasn't too convoluted. There's kind of a lot of working pieces here and soil chemistry and getting everything balanced and working right can be kind of an ongoing process and something to always be working on, especially if you live in an area with problem soils. And I know a lot of us have, you know, different issues, but issues that we're dealing with in the garden. Um, not only though, can you use this for like a chlorosis problem in a shrub or a tree, a lot of people start using this iron tone about midsummer, about this time of year on their grass, because when it gets so hot, you don't necessarily want to encourage a lot of foliar growth. You instead want your, your lawn to be nice and green, but you don't want to have to be mowing it all the time. And when it's really hot, and if you live in a very humid area and you're encouraging a lot of growth, that can also encourage a lot of disease as well. So it's a good idea to kind of back off on more fertilizer type that creates a lot of growth and just feed it iron to keep it nice and green if you're dealing with a yellowing lawn and then you don't have that extra growth and maintenance. And also side note, I did want to mention when I say it's a slower feed than like a water soluble type, um, you may not notice a difference in a couple of days or a week. It may be a couple, three weeks before you start noticing that foliage starting to turn a darker green, but it's slowly breaking down in the soil. So it's going to last so much longer. When you do a water soluble or something that's a little bit more fast acting, you might notice a little bit more action quicker but then it goes away and then you have to keep on adding it and while this one's like still chugging along in the soil so it might be that you need to add a slow uh, feed like this maybe a couple three times a season if you're having an issue uh, as opposed to something different that's more fast acting that you would have to add a lot more frequently so now I do want to show you how I'm going to apply this both to the trees, the shrub, and then we will show you um, how we apply it to the grass. Okay, let's start with the calicarpas. I'm going to apply the soil acidifier first, and I know the bag says it turns hydrangeas blue, which it does help with that, but it also says it lowers soil pH, which is why we're using it. I'm just following the instructions on the back of the bag, and it says to use about two and a half cups for established plants, and I'm going to apply it right around the drip line of the plant, which is right where the outer leaves fall, not right around the base of the plant. So I'll just kind of do a ring around the plant with that and then we'll apply iron tone which the instructions say to do one to two cups for established uh, shrubs or trees so I'll probably use the lower amount since these are smaller and I'll use the higher amount on my larger trees um, and you can't I'm not measuring anything you can't really overdo too much I mean I'm obviously not going to dump the whole bags on one shrub but I'm just going to kind of guesstimate two and a half cups here My fox gloves that are around these will probably benefit from this too. Okay. And then about a cup of iron tone. And then I'm just gonna scratch it in just a little bit and then I'll bring my hose over here and get it watered in. Okay, so now I have two more calicarpa to treat that are just right here. I know they're probably pretty bright. I don't know if you can see them very well. And then we'll move on to the maple. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing with this tree, just I'm gonna be using a little bit more product and then my circle is gonna be a little bit bigger because I wanna go around the drip line. Now there are some Supertunia Vista snowdrifts that I have planted right below, but I think they're gonna benefit from this as well because they are showing some chlorosis signs. This must just be a really tough pocket of soil. apply it to is our grass and this is pretty self-explanatory I mean it's how you apply most all other fertilizers to your grass um, by using a some type of a spreader these are both broadcast spreaders and there's a chart on the back of these bags um, that tell you all the most common type like brand of spreaders that you can buy and what to set the dial at so this is a Scott's broadcast spreader that we brought from our last lawn and this used to be sufficient for our last patch of grass because it was a lot smaller um, and it said to uh, set it to the fi number 15 on the dial. Um, and I'll still use this for like little um, more isolated things, but I'm gonna be spreading this on most of our grass today. So I'm gonna use our bigger setup, basically the same thing, just a bigger hopper. It. 
this is pretty much how I'm gonna be spending the rest of my day. I'm just gonna walk around and make sure that I've treated anything that's showing any sign of chlorosis and get on top of it. And then I'll probably be treating again here in a couple of months um, just to keep that um, pH lowering and that soil conditioning going. And I hope this video is helpful for any of you who are dealing with issues like this in your garden and you know you have an iron deficiency, I definitely recommend giving these couple of things a try. So anyway, thanks so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.